Welcome everybody. Um, today is the review session for the first unit test in Physics C. We will go through all the questions and I will give you a chance to ask questions um, in each session. Um, so, and we are going to walk through in each of the sessions question by question. Question one goes as follows. A particle a particle moves along a straight path such that its speed changes with time according to the equation v equal to v naught e raised to the power negative alpha t, where v naught and alpha are constants. Which of the following statements gives the correct relation between the magnitude of the acceleration a of the particle and its speed? We know that by definition, the instantaneous acceleration a is defined as dv over dt, which is going to be equal to d over dt of v naught e negative alpha t, and this is equal to um, v naught. Let me put it this way: negative alpha e negative alpha t. This is the same as negative alpha v naught e negative alpha t, which is just going to be negative alpha v. So our answer is D. Any questions on this one? Now the next question goes as follows. The graph below shows the graph below represents the motion of an object moving with a constant velocity. Suppose the direction to the right is taken as positive. Which of these graphs correctly represent the motion of this object? Which of these graphs currently correctly represent the motion of this object? Um, understand that the object is moving with a constant velocity. If the velocity is constant, if V is constant, then the acceleration, which is defined as dV dt, will be what? Zero. And if that is the case, this is not the right graph. Here the acceleration is zero. This is not the right graph. Here the acceleration is constant. And this is the right graph. So our answer will be D. The next displacement can be obtained from a, the slope of an acceleration time graph. Remember that the slope of an acceleration time graph, what does it represent? It represents oh, a jerk, which is just dA dt. In essence, this is going to be d3x dt cube. Now, the slope of a velocity time graph represents what? Acceleration. A is defined as dv dt. The area bounded by acceleration time graph represents what? Velocity. velocity. No change in velocity. Remember the area, the area bounded by a velocity time graph delta represents a change in velocity. So it's just t naught T final A D T. The area under a velocity time graph signifies change in position, which is displacement. Change in position, which is displacement. We know that delta X is equal to T naught T final V D T. This is the definition of what? Displacement, which is equal to the area bounded by a VT graph. 
which is equal to the area bounded by a VT graph. Now, so the answer here will be D. The next question goes as follows. Consider the path of a ball moving along a path through air under the action of the gravitational force. You may neglect the effect of air resistance and friction. As it rises, as it reaches the maximum height, which of the following statement is true? What happens at maximum height? Take note about the following. If we throw the ball vertically upwards and it goes down, at maximum height, the velocity here will be equal to what? Zero and A will be equal to negative G. If on the other hand, the ball follows a parabolic path, at maximum height, we have two velocities, Vx and Vy. The vertical velocity will be equal to zero, but the horizontal velocity will not be equal to zero. Since it's evident that the object is moving along a path, it means that we are dealing with a parabolic wide path. Therefore, at maximum height, the speed of the object is minimum but the acceleration is negative g. Hence, my choice of answer is b. My choice of answer is b. Now, the next, two identical objects, a and b, fall from rest from different heights to the ground and feel no appreciable air resistance. In other words, air resistance can be neglected if object b take twice as long as object a to reach the ground what is the ratio of the heights from which a and b fell we have object a this is going to be equal to half g t of a squared h of b is equal to half g T of B squared. But what do we know? We know that T of B is 2 T of A. Therefore, HB will be equal to 1 half G bracket 2 T of A, all of this squared. And this will be 4 bracket 1 half G T A squared. And that is going to be equal to 4H of A. In other words, HA divided by HB will be equal to 1 over 4. And therefore, the answer is C. And therefore, the answer is C. The next question. So the question says two stones, X and Y, are of different mass are dropped from the top of a cliff y is dropped a short time after x so generally since they are dropped from rest we know that y generally is y naught plus v o t minus half g t squared and this guy here is negative um, if we take where the object is dropped to be at the origin, this guy will be zero. It's dropped from rest, so this guy is zero. And we, we are going to end up with y equal to half gt squared. So if we draw a graph, this is t. The first object, x, starts from the origin. This will be x. The second object will begin somewhere a short while later. So the graph will look like that. This is y. And you realize that the spacing in between the, the curve increases, right? Because this is an exponential function. Now, because this is important, because air resistance is negligible, because air resistance is negligible, the masses doesn't matter. You understand, right? The masses doesn't matter. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go with 
with D. Keep in mind, keep in mind that if air resistance was present, the masses would play a big role. And you're going to see that when we start dynamics. Yes, please. Is it the mass or the shape? The mass as well. Really? Let me show you. Uh huh. For example, this is mg, and this is the resistive force, right? Okay. Now, the object is accelerating downwards, which means that mg minus r will be equal to ma. So the acceleration A is equal to G minus R over M. You realize that the bigger the mass, the smaller the overall resistance, right? Or in other words, the bigger the mass, the bigger the acceleration because this quantity will be small. You're dividing with M. Oh, compared to the mass of the air particle. Yeah. Or so in the as long as r is a lo as long as this quantity is equal to 0 the mass doesn't matter but if air resistance is present then the bigger the mass the acceleration will be big um, be uh, this is actually shown from that equation now the next question is this this is an interesting question first of all the area bounded by uh, an acceleration time graph signifies a change in velocity. Uh, we know that a change in x is the integral from t naught to t final v dt, and a change in v is the integral from t naught to t final a dt. Now the question says that suppose the object begins moving from rest. What is the total distance covered by the body? We can, it starts from rest. So dv is equal to v minus 0. All of this is going to be equal to the area bounded by the graph. And this is a, what, a rectangle. So the area is going to be 4 meters per square second multiplied by 3 seconds which is going to be 12 meters per second then we know the final velocity we can calculate the displacement delta x is v naught t plus half a t squared we can still use this formula anyway if we do that we will have this is going to be 0 multiplied by 3 plus half 4 multiplied by 3 all squared. This will give us 18 meters. But if we use this distance delta x is given by speed multiplied by time which is just going to be 12 meters per second multiplied by what? 3 seconds. This will give us what? Um, 6, this is 6, 36 meters. There is something, I think this is not right. Um, this is 2 goes off 2, this is 9. 9 times 2 will give us 18 meters. They're supposed to be the same. Um, the two methods, we know that v final is equal to 12 meters per second ah, okay distance delta x is gonna be v final plus v initial divided by 2 multiplied by t which is 12 meters per second divided by 2 all multiplied by 3 right and 6 times 3 will give us what 18 meters it's the same so the answer is B. You see that, right? Um, the next. This is an interesting problem. A tennis ball is dropped from rest, falls vertically, 
and bounces upwards off the floor. In what direction is the change in velocity of the ball due to the collision with the floor? In what direction will it be? Vertically upwards, vertically downwards, horizontally left, horizontally right, none of the above? It's going to be vertically upward. To see this, when, when an object falls just before collision, this is V initial, and just after collision, this is V final. Understand that the collision here is inelastic. The collision is inelastic, meaning that the V final is way less than the V initial. The V final is way less than the V initial, which means which means that the change in V is going to be equal to V final minus V initial. V initial is negative because it's pointing downwards. V final is positive. So technically, this is like V final negative negative V initial. J and that will give us V final plus V initial J so it will be pointing vertically upwards so my choice is A I actually love that question um, X is equal to 24 T minus 2 T cubed Therefore, V, which is defined as dx over dt, is equal to 24 minus 6t squared. To calculate the point where the object comes to rest, when an object is at rest, the velocity is what? Zero. So if we equate that to zero, we will end up with um, t squared equal to what? Four. Am I right? which means that t is equal to plus or minus 2 seconds. Time could never be negative. This would mean that t is 2 seconds. Now we know the time. All we have to do is calculate what? The distance. x will be equal to 24 multiplied by 2 minus 2 multiplied by 8. And our response will be... about 32 meters so the answer here is B um, 11 X is equal to A plus B T minus C T squared so a particle is moving along the x-axis such that its position as a function of time is given by a plus bt minus ct squared. Suppose a is 100, b 50, c 4. Calculate the velocity of the particle at t equal to 5. v is equal to dx over dt. This is going to be equal to b minus 2ct. So, V at T equal to 5, this is going to be 50 minus 2, bracket C is 4, T is 5. So, we have here 50, uh, 2 times 5 is 10, this is 40, and we have here 10 meters per second. So, our answer here is B. A particle is moving along a straight line, decelerates uniformly from 40 meters per second to 20 meters per second in, in 5 seconds. Then has a constant acceleration of 20 meters per second squared during the next 4 seconds. Determine the average speed. V average is the total what? distance divided by the time taken 
the total distance divided by time taken. Now to calculate the total distance, we are going to break down this problem into two parts. Part 1. The part where it decelerates, we know that um, V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A delta X. That would mean that delta X1 will be equal to V squared minus V naught squared all divided by 2A. Um, do we know the acceleration during this time? We don't, so this is not useful. Okay, if that is not useful, we can resort to using, let me see, we know V initial, we know V final, and we know the time. So should we use V equal to V naught plus 80? If we use that, we need to calculate, Bert, the displacement. The question says that it decelerates uniformly. In other words, the deceleration is constant. And if that is the case, then we can use delta x equal to v final plus v initial divided by 2 or multiply by t, which will be equal to 40 meters per second plus 20 meters per second, all divided by 2, multiplied by 5. What will this give us? This will be 60 divided by 2, 30. 30 times 5, this will give us 150 meters. Now, this will be x1. What about x2? What about x2? The V initial in this case is um, 20 meters per second. A is 20 meters per square second and T is 4 seconds. This so delta x2 will be equal to 20 multiplied by 4 plus half 20 4 squared and uh, what will that give you that will give you 240 meters therefore v average will be equal to 150 meters plus 240 meters all divided by the total time interval that will be 9 seconds and uh, who what is the answer uh, yep about 43 could you not for the second one just say one half 100 minus 20 times Yep. Now the next question reads an object is dropped from rest into a pit and accelerates due to gravity at roughly 10 meters per square seconds. It hits the ground in 5 seconds. A rock is then dropped from rest to a second pit and it hits the ground in 10 seconds. How much deeper is the second pit compared to the first? We know that it takes five seconds and uh, for the first pit, H1 is equal to half G T1 squared, which is just gonna be half multiplied by 10 meters per square seconds all multiplied by 5 seconds all squared this will be equal to 5 squared is 25 multiplied by 5 this will give us um, is it 125 meters 
actually you can do this problem without necessarily doing the numerical calculations but I just want to do this just in case for the students this is 10 square and that will give us 10 square is 100 100 multiplied by 5 that will give us 500 meters if you divide 500 meters by 125 meters what will be the ratio it will be 4 so the answer is A another simpler way that Another simpler way would be H2 is equal to half G 2T all squared. This is half G T squared multiplied by 4. And this is H1 multiplied by 4. So you see that H2 divided by H1 is equal to 4 or the reverse. Um, it's true. Yeah, I just did the second method here. But that was the one that you got numerical numbers. This doesn't include any numerical method or computation. Okay, yes. Um, let's move on to question number 14. We'll get over with this soon. So just basically hang in there. A ball is released from a balloon that is descending. So V0 is negative... 10 meters per second. Uh, what is the speed of the ball after 10 seconds? V final is equal to V initial plus 80. This is negative 10 meters per second plus negative 10 meters per square second all multiplied by 10 seconds. We have here 10 by 10, so 100, negative 100, so this will be negative 110 meters per second. So the answer is not in here, so I'm adding plus 1 to everybody. Could, could you, like, on the test, I'm confused, like, could you define, like, whether we use 10 for gravity? Yeah, it's 9, defined. 9.8 for gravity? Yep, it's defined. Oh, they said you use 10 for gravity. Right here, at the top of the question packet. They are all like that. Um, I don't know, but it's always good to check the instructions. The instructions may vary from year to year. A football player starts from rest. 10 meters from the goal line and accelerates from the goal line at 5 meters. How far from the goal line is the player after 4 seconds? X is equal to X0 plus V0 T plus half A T squared. This is going to be equal to 10 meters plus he starts from rest so this will be 0 meters per second multiply by 4 seconds plus half this is 5 meters per second squared and uh, this is 4 seconds and we are going to have here 10 meters plus squared. yeah squared this is like 16, no, yeah, 16, right? 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 times 4 is 40. So f this is 40 meters. If you add all, you're going to have 50 meters. So the answer should be D. Now, the graph above, this is not supposed to be there 
The graph above shows the position as a function of time for an object moving along a horizontal surface. At which of the level position is the object at rest? This is a function of position versus time. So the instantaneous velocity here will be the slope of the graph, right? So the slope of the graph here is just dx dt, which is v. Um, now the slope of the graph at t equal to 0 is 0. So my answer there is just a. A car starts at from rest and moves with a constant acceleration of 5 meters per second along a straight line. The speed and distance travel after 4 seconds. Uh, it starts from rest. So V0 is 0 meters per second. A is 5 meters per square seconds. And we need to calculate the distance travel and the speed after 4 seconds. V is equal to V0 plus AT. That would be equal to M 0 meters per second plus um, 5 meters per square second multiplied by 4 seconds, which will be equal to 5 times 4 should be 20. So this is 20 meters per second. Now the total distance travel can easily be calculated by the fact that delta x is equal to v naught t plus half a t squared, which will be equal to 0 plus half 5 t squared is 4 all squared, and that should be equal to 4 squared is 16, 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 times 5, that should be what, 40 meters. So this answer is B. A soccer ball is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 30 meters per second. Assuming that air resistance is negligible, how long will the ball rise? We know that at maximum height, V max is zero. This would mean that zero will be equal to V naught minus GT, and this is the time to reach maximum height. Therefore, T max will be equal to V naught all divided by G, and that should be 30 meters per second divided by 10 meters per square second, and our answer here will be what? 3 seconds. So the answer is B. <coughs> now, let's move on to the next. Yeah. Yes, please. But the question specifically said you should use G to be 10. You understand, right? Follow the instructions. Always follow the instructions. The maximum height reached by the object y max is equal to y naught plus v naught t minus half g t squared. Assuming that the object starts from zero, that would be zero. This is 30 meters per second. Multiply by 3 seconds minus half g, which is 10, t squared, that is 3 squared. Um, this would be 3 times 3 is 9, that would be 90 meters minus 3 squared is 9, 9 multiplied by 10, 90, 90 divided by 2 would be 45 so this is just basically 45 meters pardon when you use that point you get 46 and that's a, so, yeah, so um there is no answer here so i'm adding a point to everybody so it's supposed to be 45 um, we have an object it is thrown up from a certain height above the ground 
like that. So initially, we know that y is y naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared. When it falls back to the ground here, we are at the origin. This will be 0 h plus v t minus half g t squared. This would mean that t will be equal to minus v plus or minus the square root of v squared minus 4a, which is that h, all divided by 2a, which is negative 1 half g. So this would be, this would imply that I'm choosing just the positive t. The negative signs will cancel and we, we will be left with v all divided by g plus the square root of v square over g squared plus 2gh all divided by g squared. We can further simplify this problem to look like t equal to v over g bracket 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 2 gh all divided by v squared bracket close and my answer here is c that was a tough one algebraically two billiard balls are dropped to the ground from different heights one ball is dropped two seconds after the first after the other so if this is t, t plus 2, they both hit the ground at the same time, 3 seconds after the second ball, 3 seconds after the second ball. Remember this, one ball is dropped 2 seconds after the other. You understand, right? So if it takes t seconds to fall for the first ball, it will take t plus 2 seconds to fall for the second ball. And the question says that they both hit the ground at the same time, 3 seconds after the second ball. If it's 3 seconds after the second ball, it means that t is equal to 5. Do you agree with me? If it three seconds after the second ball and before the second ball we, we had waited for how many seconds two seconds therefore t will be equal to five as a result we are going to have here delta h will just be one half ten five squared minus one half ten 3 squared. This will be 25 multiplied by 5, 125 meters minus um, 45 meters. And our answer here should be, can you calculate the value and give me please? Pardon? This will be zero. Twelve. Yeah, 
it will be about 80 meters so there is no answer here if you use 9.8 you get C yeah. okay those who did C I'll still give them a point but I'll add a plus to everybody who submits this homework Yeah. I totally agree with you. From what height was the object dropped? If you use 9.8, you will get. Yeah. Um, let's do it. H is equal to 1 half GT squared, which is 1 half 10. 5 squared, this is just going to be 25, 125 meters. Um, Two particles start at the origin and move along the x-axis. For 0 less than t, less than 20, their respective positions are given by this and this. At what time t do the particles have the same velocity? v1 will be equal to 4t plus 4. And uh, v2 will be equal to 10. So when v1 is equal to v2, this implies that 4t plus 4 is equal to 10, in which case t will be equal to what? 16 divided by 4, right? No, 6. Which is same as 3 over 2. How are we doing so far? Yeah. 